Now, I know you guys read that title, and I know what you're probably thinking. This has got to be clickbait. There is no way that this right here is not a firearm. Well, that's where you'd be wrong. Let's talk about that. What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Now, as I've said before, this that we're shooting today is not a firearm, not legally speaking. Now, I bet you're wondering, Brandon, how can that be the case? You're shooting this, not firearm, with live 45 long Colt cartridges. How does that make any sense? This looks like a gun and this looks like a bullet. Well, you're a very astute young one, I will say that. So yes, it is technically a gun. It's not technically a gun. It's it's a fucking gun. For example, if your snot-nosed little kid was to yell, Daddy, that man in our living room has a gun. Yes, he's correct. I, I've got a gun. The space under your couch is filthy, by the way. But what we're going to be talking about is an exemption to the law that some of you might be familiar with, but you may not be familiar with kind of a next step. We're going to take it a little bit further. So let's just cut to the chase. Why is this not considered a firearm? That is because this right here is black powder. This is not a cartridge firing weapon. Well, it's completely unloaded, as you can see. It's not capped here, and as well as, actually, this gun has never been loaded. Um, so, but it, it would need caps on the rear of the cylinder, as well as the black powder poured into each of the, uh, the, the little cylinders there, and then have the uh, projectile rammed down into place. I'm gonna show you how that works in a little bit. This is an old ass gun. Not this one, this is a repro. This is an 1847 Walker Colt. And so is this. Got two of them today, but they're a little different. I'm gonna show you why here in a sec. Now, according to the Gun Control Act, among other things, this is considered to be an antique gun. Because it is black powder and it's not capable of accepting modern cased uh, ammunition, it is completely exempt and is considered not a firearm because it's just a, it's a cap and ball revolver. It's really kind of old. Like I said, this one's, this one's not old. This one, however, is. This is another one out of my collection, this right here is a, a genuine antique. I believe it's uh, 1857, if I'm not mistaken. Smaller piece, but a genuine pre-Civil War revolver. You don't actually need to have one that's this old to be considered exempt as an antique weapon, just one that is modeled after it, and again, is, is black powder and can't accept modern pistol cartridges. But it's an explosion in a hand cannon that fires a bullet. What, what makes this different enough to not be considered a firearm? Well, for modern ammunition, like we have here, our 762 by 39 our, uh, our piece of AK food here, uh, this is just, you know, modern cartridge uh, of ammunition. You have four main components. You have four main components. One is your bullet. Most people uh, incorrectly call this whole thing a bullet. The bullet is just the projectile, this little bit up top. Another component is called your casing, often referred to as the brass. This is not brass, this is steel case ammo, but that is because AK food is made to be super cheap. It's an AK, no matter. But it's the casing here that holds everything together. It holds the bullet in place, and it houses the other two components, which is your powder, uh, which is what's inside this angry maraca here that makes it actually go off, and on the rear, you have your primer. Now, on pretty much all modern ammunitions, uh, especially in, well, pretty much anything that's not like 22 or something like that, you'll have a uh, center fire cartridge, which means that the primer is in the center and the gun will strike that primer, causing the whole thing to go off and the round to explode, sending the bullet out the front of the gun. Science! On a cap and ball revolver like this, uh, there's a reason you call it cap and ball. Cap and ball torture, whatever. So you have your caps here, which is uh, your primers. And I'll go ahead and get a little closer to you guys so you can see this. You have your caps here, which go on the end of the cylinder. So you can see they're made to fit right there on the end and they stay there and then when they're coming when they come around in the gun when it's its turn it has to wait in line then it fires that 
is what sets off the rest of the powder. Then you've got your black powder, of course. I want to keep that over there while we're doing these demonstrations and have the lid on because that can go poorly. And then you have your ball. This one, I'll, I'll leave the jokes up to you on that. This is a uh, 454 caliber ball, uh, which is just slightly oversized because we have a 45 uh, caliber pistol. There's a lot of different sizes that you can use for the projectiles on these 45 calibers. Uh, it just like within a few thousandths of each other usually. I like to go with 454 just because it shaves a little bit of a ring off, makes a nice tight seal because if you don't make a tight seal, either with your wadding or with your projectile, whatever, then you could have a chain fire and it causes all of them to go off at once, which is unsurprisingly very uncomfortable for the shooter. So I'm gonna take my measured out bit of powder, pour that right in the top here of that cylinder. It makes it nice and easy for me to come around and do this. Put that ball over line it up and then the pistol actually includes the ramrod that you use to shove that down into place rotate it further around get your nice little ring of lead that's uh, only causes cancer in the state of California so we should be good I take our percussion cap I rotated it back on around so we've got this nice little clearance here so that's fitting right on in place and then we're good to go I'm going to rotate the cylinder, advance it to uh, the cylinder that we know is loaded because it's the one with the cap on it, and fire. <laughs> Voila! Black powder revolver. Now the really cool part about this not being federally classified as a firearm is that you can actually just order these in the mail. You don't have to go to a gun store or do the normal background check like you have to do in the U.S. for uh, any other firearm that you're, you're wanting to buy. This you can actually just have shipped straight to your door. That's how I got these. I had them shipped directly to my door. That's not for all old style revolvers, like for example the one we used in the Alec Baldwin uh, Demonetized Mythbuster video. Uh, that one had to be, you know, bought at a gun store. I had to do my 4473 and everything for that. That's because it takes modern cartridges. It's, it's an older model of firearm, but it still takes center fire ammunition. It's built to take center fire ammunition. Yeah, you can just order this bad boy in the mail and it shows up just like the good old days of the Sears catalog. <laughs> there's, there's not even an age restriction on this. I remember I was shooting black powder revolvers when I was like 15, 16. I will say if you are a younger viewer and you're considering uh, getting into black powder shooting, one, I'd say it's very fun. Just make sure you do it safely. Black powder can get kind of sketchy, uh, more so than even modern ammunition, just because you're dealing with, with black powder, it, it can kind of get gonna get out there. Please make sure you know what you're doing, make sure you're doing it safely, and honestly, I would suggest finding somebody who's a little bit older, that has been doing black powder for a long time, and see if they're willing to pass down some advice. And just remember that even though it's not regulated like a firearm, it doesn't mean that the four basic rules of firearm safety don't apply. Basically, don't be a douchebag. And if you are just getting into firearms or you're looking for more firearm content, eh, you might as well go ahead and subscribe. Doesn't hurt. Or else. So now let's take this a little bit of a step forward. Let's say I have one of these steel framed uh, antique revolvers that is not a firearm, but I do want to be able to shoot, well, not modern ammo, but cased ammo out of it. So what we have here is a box of cowboy loads. Uh, this is Sleeping Dog Ammo 45 Colt, 200 grand projectiles. And while it does look again like modern ammunition, you know, you got your center fire uh, cartridge and everything, you know, despite having a lead tip, most, <laughs> most modern ammo doesn't have that. This is a little underloaded so that it doesn't put too much strain on older antique style firearms that weren't meant to have that kind of force behind it. And yes, I know I'm saying firearms. I know this whole video is about how the fact that they're not legally firearms. The semantics of this video are gonna fucking kill me. You understand what I'm saying. But yeah, let's say you wanna go to a cowboy action shoot or whatever, and uh, you wanna use this more modern cased ammo. And that's where you would get something like this. And this is my other 1847 uh, Colt Walker. I think they're both Dragoons. But this one has a cartridge conversion cylinder. This is literally the exact same gun as this. I bought them together because I was, it was late one night, I was watching the Outlaw Josie Wales, I had my credit card out, shit happens. Now this is my home desk where I like to watch those kind of movies. Unfortunately for my wallet sometimes, it's also the desk where I go to websites like Gunspot.com. Gunspot is an online auction site and quickly becoming my next addiction. 
It's a neat place to legally buy and sell new used firearms, accessories, whatever. They're a new sponsor of the channel and I think we're gonna get some very new kind of exotic toys for the channel from them very soon. So make sure you check out the guys at Gunspot. Back to the range. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, this here is the disassembly. You have to kind of punch this out, you have to punch this out. There you go. Anyway, get this little out, this little uh, lever here out and then the front of the gun can come off and you can remove your cylinder. So this is unloaded because I just fired it and I made sure I fired all the rounds. This comes out the back and you have your 45 Colt cylinder. So taking this one apart, I'll show you the difference. This cylinder is all one piece and that's because that's because you've got your uh, your chambers here which is where you pour the powder down and then press the the ball into and then on the back you have your nipples yeah they're that's what they're called it's, it's a nipple <sighs> get over it and this is what you put the caps onto and that is where the hammer engages them smacks that ignites that and you know fires the fires the round on this cartridge conversion cylinder you just have an open back here, so you slide in your ammo like so, uh, preferably one that hasn't been struck. I prefer the ammo that hasn't been fired. Put it into place like so, and then when you're putting it into the gun, there's a little peg here that lines up. This peg up top stops it from rotating and it locks it into place. And then you have these little, basically just independent firing pins for every chamber that when the hammer smacks it, it pushes inward and that protrudes just far enough to be able to ignite the primer. It's a pretty neat little system, and this, this is not just for this one particular model of gun. There's plenty of cartridge conversion cylinders for a lot of the guns that are available out on the market. There are a couple of considerations you wanna make. For example, this is a steel frame revolver. Uh, you don't really wanna use brass frame revolvers when using these cartridge conversion cylinders just because uh, the brass does not hold up as well. These, uh, these cowboy loads are slightly underpowered. Uh, by modern standards, but there's still a little bit more than what these uh, replica brass guns were designed for. Uh, so you definitely want steel frame if you're gonna be shooting a lot of the cowboy loads. All right, so we have our conversion cylinder, popping our 45 Colt cowboy loads into place. And then we take our end cap here, put it on. And so this is where you wanna be very, very careful because now, these are all primed and ready to go. So you just want to be careful. You're not smacking it around. Otherwise, you're going to qualify for a Darwin Award. Or whoever's standing directly to the left of you is going to qualify for a Baldwin Award. But cool. Now we have our gun back together. I am keeping it between these two cylinders so that if, you know, any forward pressure goes onto that hammer, nothing's going to happen because it's, you know, smacking on a piece of steel and not a firing pin. Usually a good call. Now we have our gun that is loaded up with our cartridge conversion cylinder, and let's give her a shot. Just like that. Move on to the next round. Yeah, and it's just as simple as that. Same black powder gun, but now shooting 45 cold cartridges. So now here's the weird part. <laughs> okay, if you have a revolver that was built to fire these uh, 45 Colt cartridges, that would be a firearm. You'd have to go to a gun store to do the 4473 or whatever. You couldn't get it just shipped to your door from Cabela's. However, you can buy this black powder cap and ball pistol and have it shipped to your door with no background check because it, it's not a firearm. It's just, it's not. However, you can also get this cartridge conversion cylinder shipped to your door because it is also not a firearm. Do you see what I am getting at here? Now, personally, this is something that I wouldn't fuck around with. Uh, let's say you're a prohibited person or you're underage or something. I I'm not sure you would still be allowed to own this because there could be some rule that says this is now manufacturing your own firearm. I don't really know. This is not legal advice. But if you're a normal law-abiding citizen, it's always been legal for Americans to manufacture their own firearms at home. So this shouldn't be a problem for the vast majority of you. However, uh, like as far as the prohibited person or underage or whatever, to my knowledge, there's no regulation against this, but I'm just telling you the way it is. If they make a regulation that says you can't do this, I'll gladly tell you that, but I, I, as far as the rules go right now, you can buy both because neither one is considered to be a firearm. 
Now, whether you can own both and put them together and be able to do stuff like this, that might be a different story. But for the vast majority of us, you know, we just get to plank around and do cool shit with black powder guns. Because this shit is just super cool. No, I know what you're thinking. Did he fire five shots? Or all six? Honestly, somewhere in the monologuing, I, I lost track myself. So that just leaves one question. It's five. What? It was, it was five. Oh. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you learned something along the way. Black powder is a really cool hobby, just be sure before you do anything or you buy anything, make sure you know your local, state, and federal laws. As it turns out, if you're being arrested, I learned it from a guy on the internet doesn't really help you much, so make sure you know your own local laws. And if you guys are new to the channel, you boys gonna subscribe or whistle Dixie? I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> As always, I appreciate you guys staying to the end of the video, and I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers next time around. Thanks. Fear is my obsession to make the perfect weapon Like us put his eyes to the top But I can't let you can stop your 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 stop Nope. You is out of bullets. <laughs> something something Yellowstone shooting cowboy loads. I don't know, it's hot. <laughs>